The town's burning, everyone's in danger, and I'm losing my Riverdale loving mind. Come freak out with me on Sweetwater Secrets. Hey River Babes, I'm your host Leanne Aguilera and this is the Sweetwater Secrets After Show for episode 211, chapter 34, Judgment Night. Now all those who were hyperventilating while watching this week's episode, please raise your fangs. Okay, now today I'll be bringing you exclusive answers from Riverdale stars Skeet Ulrich and Vanessa Morgan about the serpent's most shocking moments and then I'm gearing up to go full on riot mode in Hisses and Kisses. But first, I'm going to do my best to quickly recap the most insane moments of the episode, and there are a lot of them in the blue and gold breakdown. <sighs> Deep breaths, y'all. Here we go. The episode picked up right where we left off with the Black Hood viciously chasing Cheryl around her house. But she quickly transformed from a damsel in distress to avenging Archer. It was awesome. I only miss when I mean to. She shot the Black Hood in the shoulder, and once we fast forwarded through the blood at the Coopers and a dead doctor in what was supposed to be Hal Cooper's hospital bed, the truth was officially revealed. There's a Black Hood. That's right. It was Hal Cooper all along. You guys, he played some creepy old home videos of himself as a little boy and revealed some truly bizarre and confusing story about Grandpappy Blossom and the blackmail and the subsequent cover up of the Conway family murders, and <gasps> none of this makes any sense. It was a little underwhelming. But Alice and Betty teamed up to take out Hal, but don't get too happy, he's still alive, unfortunately, and was later arrested. But the truly vile part is that there's now some copycat Black Hood out there, and he tried to kill Fred Andrews. Again. Oh, come on! Not to worry, what's that saying? TGFD SBPV? Thank God for Dilf saving bulletproof vests. Tom Keller, he just put these on before we went to the diner. Meanwhile, at the Pembroke, Small Fry was hell bent on getting revenge for his father's death. But rather than confronting Hiram, Papa Poutine's son decided to attack the Lodge ladies instead. Luckily, Hermione sprang into Mama Bear mode, grabbed Hiram's hidden gun, and shot Small Fry four times in the chest. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, we need to talk about the serpents. Now, after rioting around Riverdale, the serpents quickly discovered that Penny Peabody and the ghoulies were back in town, and they kidnapped Tony. Now, Cheryl came to her girl's rescue. Untie her, you serpent hag. And the serpents all gathered round for a game plan against the ghoulies. FP then got a call saying that Fangs had passed away, and the group prepared for a battle. But not wanting a slaughter to happen, Jughead contacted Hiram, the mastermind behind the ghoulies' return, and offered him a deal. Jughead's life for the serpent's safety. Now the episode ended with FP carrying what seemed to be his son's lifeless body. And then I panicked, and I blacked out, and I woke up on the set of Sweetwater Secrets with Skeet Ulrich so I could ask him about the fate of Jughead. Take a look. That final scene with you holding uh, what looks to be Jughead's lifeless body. When you read that in the script, what was your reaction? I hope he diets. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, I wonder how heavy Cole is. In fact, actually, what they they called me and they were like, "Can you carry Cole from the writers' room?" Like, are you serious? Weeks before they even wrote it, they were like, "Can you carry Cole?" Well, they must not. They're not giving you much credit, huh? Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, I can carry him." Mm -hmm. And they were like, "Oh, well, can you go over to his trailer and send us a picture of you carrying him?" And they actually sent a PA to come like take video of me picking Cole up. Yeah. <laughs> That I was like, it's not hilarious. that bad. But I mean, in terms of reading it, it's, it's traumatic. Yeah. I mean, it's every father's worst nightmare, you know, well, uh, their kids being hurt. And I can tell that the fans right now are probably hyperventilating. Yeah. Yeah. Should they be worried? That was the massive cliffhanger. I mean, yeah. I'd be worried. Yeah, they should be worried. Now, while we all try to process that, let's move into Seven Seconds in Heaven. Now, since this episode was mostly focused on giving us all heart attacks, and seeing how many dead bodies we could count, the romance was a little light this week. But we did get this super sweet Varchi Illy. I love you. I love you too. And of course, Bughead gave us all the feels with this haunting phone call. I just want to let you know that I love you. I'll never stop loving you. Yeah, but at 
least the Shoney fans were treated to a happy moment when Cheryl channeled her inner Katniss Everdeen and stood up to Penny Peabody. Now, here's what Vanessa Morgan had to tell me about filming Cheryl's romantic rescue mission to save Tony and what this could mean for their future in the finale. Can you please talk about the Cheryl rescuing Tony scene, her coming in with her bow and arrow, so amazing. What was it like filming that? I thought it was so badass because, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, there's my girl. She's holding mm -hmm. up her bow and arrow like a boss and she saves me she from saved. a bunch of gang members just like that. <laughs> that was pretty awesome mm -hmm. and she looked like a badass doing it and her outfit was bomb. After Cheryl saves Tony, she goes to the White Worm. She's like sitting there while the serpents are all having their meeting and yeah. she kind of just slithered right in and looked very at home with them. So what can she you did. what can you tease about that? I think that she looks great with the serpents. I think she looks great with the serpents too. She doesn't really have a family so maybe she's enjoying herself. You mm -hmm. know, maybe she's feeling a little bit at home with us. And now let's sink our fangs into hisses and kisses. First and most importantly in hisses, <laughs> That one is going to the mind-blowing fact that Jughead, uh, is he, is he dead? I, I refuse to believe that FP is holding his son's lifeless body. No, I just, no. Hisses to Hal's uber lame reasoning for being the Black Hood. Because this is a town of sinners, Betty. That was way too hard to follow. And Alice is right, you're just a pathetic hypocrite and how dare you try to blame your sadistic serial killer ways on Betty's good-hearted jubilee speech. Also, why didn't you reveal what you did with Chick? I mean, I don't really care, but I also don't like lingering questions. And if you have any lingering Black Hood questions like I do, then head on over to ET Online to read my exclusive interview with Hal himself, Riverdale star Lachlan Monroe, where I grilled him on everything Black Hood related. Now, keeping it going with hisses, hisses to the fact that Fangs died. You know, that bullet wound looked fatal, but it was also a little shocking that they announced this huge news with just a quick little phone call. You know, Alice may say, If it bleeds, it leads. But with Riverdale, I say, nobody, no believing. For now. His is to FP for firing the serpents up and not listening to Jughead's good advice to stay away from the ghoulies. I also did not appreciate FP's lame reasoning for moving forward with their plan. We already voted. And extra hisses to the fact that there's apparently another Black Hood out there. Stop attacking Fred Andrews. I don't know who you are, but I do know that this reveal had better be good. Start telling me now, me more. Hisses to Hiram for pre-writing that awful October surprise article about his own wife's affair with Fred Andrews. You're a vile husband, and I'm officially launching the hashtag Free Hermione campaign because she deserves better. Switching over to kisses, that one is to Alice for telling Hal that FP is a better man than he'll ever be. You're damn right. And for using one of those fireplace pokey things to smack Hal in the face. Get that fireplace poker right there and just whack my foot. Side note, why do all TV characters always use those fireplace tools for weapons? My fireplace is electric. I don't have those. What am I supposed to do if someone ever attacks me? I can't just flip the switch. Kisses to Cheryl for rescuing her bae from Penny Peabody's clutches, for slipping in with the serpents seamlessly, and for being Riverdale's red arrow. You have not failed this city, babe. Kisses to the fact that Small Fry killed Andre. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not sending kisses to a man's death. I'm sending kisses to the fact that I'm finally relieved that Hiram fired Smithers. Because if he had still been working at the Pembroke, then it would have been his blood all over that gorgeous marble floor instead of Andre's. I love you, Smithers. Kisses to Veronica for putting Hiram in his place, and to Hermione for protecting her daughter and turning Small Fries into mashed potatoes. Kisses to Kevin and Moose for clutching each other when the ghoulies attacked Pops, and three additional smooches to Sheriff Keller, FP, and Fred for rolling up to Pops and being the Dilfs who save the day. And now it's a party! Oh my gosh, you guys, we're almost done. Well, almost done. We still have the Riverdale season two finale left, and I honestly don't know if they're going to be able to top this amazing episode. Now, check back with me next week for our very last preview episode of Sweetwater Secrets for episode 222, chapter 35, Brave New World, where I will have a special surprise for you. 
But for now, give this video a like and then hit the comments to tell me your top hisses and kisses of this mind-blowing episode. Who do you think the second Black Hood is? Which character stole the show? And do you really think that Jughead is dead? Tell me now. Adore you to pieces, River Babes.